I've been a blacksmith armorer for over 30 years. I've created weapons for over 200 feature films. This is Man at Arms. The Buster Sword is absolutely redonkulous. The blade is six feet long, 12 inches wide. I'm doing a cutting edge, a steel blade of 1075 spring steel. That'll be inserted into the blade and riveted down. This is a plate of uh, 6061 aluminum that will be milled out to shape here. This will all be wrapped in a band of bronze where I'll do a technique called uh, chasing repoussé, hammering out these little swiggly lines. Just a simple little sword. <laughs> I got a piece of 3 eighths of an inch thick 7075 aircraft aluminum at 6 feet by 12 inches. Chopped off uh, one end of it to give it the triangular tip. I brought Bill in. We call him William the Elder. He's a retired uh, foundryman machinist. I've had uh, Bill machine a slot an eighth of an inch wide by uh, over an inch and a half deep into that uh, side of the plate. We have a bolster or a hilt that's made out of one inch thick aluminum and we've milled a three eighths of an inch slot three inches deep into it. Because this sword is so ridiculous it just needs a longer handle. We have an 18 inch long handle on this uh, made out of Delrin plastic. Took a rough ingot of bronze and forged it out to the pommel and ferrule. Bronze is a little tricky. You're not supposed to be able to forge cast ingots but uh, we didn't have time to cast the pommel with a lost wax casting, so I'm gonna take a big chunk of bronze and forge it into a ball for the pommel, and I'm gonna take a smaller chunk of the ingot and forge it into a, a tube for the collar that'll be used uh, in the front of the handle. I had my assistant, Brian, turning the bronze ferrule and pommel on the lathe, and then I took the rough turn pieces to the belt grinder, trued them up, and used a scotch Brite belt to refine that. I took the vise off the vertical milling machine and clamped the sheet of aluminum up there and used a ball end mill to mill in decorative lines on the blade. We had to heat treat a six foot length of eighth inch thick by three inch wide 1075 steel, grind it out to a razor sharp edge, then set that into the milled slot on the edge of the blade and rivet it down. Due to the size of the Buster's sword, I couldn't bring it over to the mill or the drill press when it was fully assembled, so we had to use a portable drill. Burned up three drills trying to hand drill through that solid block of uh, aluminum. After we had the whole Buster's sword assembled, we hit it with a chemical to darken the aluminum to patina it and give it a, a dark steel appearance. I'm a pretty strong guy, but just carrying the Buster's sword out of my workshop pretty much wrecked my back and arm. The thing probably weighed 75, 80 pounds. This has got to be one of the most ridiculous, huge sword blades I've ever made. I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. I don't think I want to do another one, but uh, I can uh, mark this in my baby book that, yeah, this one's done. Thanks for watching Man at Arms. Be sure to subscribe. Tell me in the comments what weapon you'd like to see next. <laughs>